Mommy, please tell me a story. Let me tell you a story to win a princess. Many many years ago, there was a small kingdom in northern India ruled by a monarch who was a good king in many ways. The center of all his thoughts and affection was his only daughter, a really beautiful princess. The king always felt that one day the princess could marry a great prince and become the queen of a vast empire. Unfortunately, when she was 18 years of age, the princess fell ill with a mysterious disease which no doctor in the land could understand. Doctors, sages and astrologers came to the palace, each suggesting this or that as a cure, but it was of no avail and it was obvious to everyone that the princess' condition was gradually becoming worse. The king was in the depths of despair. As a last resort, the king sent out a proclamation far and wide that he could give the princess weight in gold to any doctor who could cure her of this terrible illness. Eventually, two doctors from Vijayanagar came to the court and after examining the princess, sought an audience with the grief-stricken king. Your Majesty, this disease is virtually unknown, explained the elder of the two doctors. No ordinary medicines are of any good, but there is a special type of orange available. If the princess can be given three of these oranges, then she will be restored to health. The king was perplexed because he had never heard of anything called oranges. What are oranges and where can we obtain three? Sire, replied the physician, the orange is a fruit and this special kind of orange only grows in certain areas of central India, a long journey from here. The king immediately made it known throughout the land that he could give his daughter's hand in marriage to any man who obtained the three oranges necessary to cure the princess. Now, not very far from the palace lived an elderly woman who had three grown-up sons. The two elder sons didn't believe in work, only in the idle pleasures of life. But the youngest of the three was hard-working. In fact, he was the mainstay of the home. When the eldest son heard of the king's proclamation, he was excited at the dreams of marrying the lovely princess and one day ruling the whole kingdom. He quickly got round his mother to pack some food and give him what money she had so he could set off on his journey through India to find the three oranges. After weeks of travel, he found the oranges and packing them safely in a basket, lost no time on his journey back to win the hand of the princess. With the kingdom in sight, but tired after so many weeks of travel, he decided to rest a while by the roadside. As he lay dreaming of his good fortune to come, a very old woman came ambling along the road. And when she reached our traveller, she asked him what was in his basket. Frogs, you silly old woman, came the impatient reply. So let them be, replied the old woman and she went her way. Later the youth arrived at the palace, clutching his precious basket, and he was taken before the king. He explained, here your majesty are the three oranges, now I can marry the princess. The basket was opened. But instead of three oranges being inside, out jumped three fat frogs. The king was rightly annoyed at such a trick and ordered that the youth be given twenty lashes and then be thrown into prison. Meanwhile, the second son, feeling sure that his elder brother must have failed, having been away so long, also set out to find the three oranges. Like his brother, after weeks of travel, he was able to find the wonderful oranges which he packed in a basket and then made haste to return home. Now it was almost at the same spot that this brother decided to take a rest and he had hardly closed his eyes when along came the same old woman who eyeing the basket he held so tightly asked him what was inside. Snakes, poisonous snakes, now be on your way, shouted the youth in a threatening voice. So let them be, said the old woman as she ambled off. 
After resting, he quickly went to the palace and when confronted by the king, held out the basket saying, Here are the three oranges. Please now announce my marriage to the princess. When the basket was opened, instead of there being three oranges in it, out slithered three hissing cobras. The guards quickly killed the snakes and the king ordered that the erring youth be given fifty lashes and imprisonment. Now the youngest brother, wondering at the long absence of his two brothers, also decided to try and find the oranges. Eventually, he too found the oranges and, like his brothers, rested by the roadside near end of his travels. He was awakened from his slumber to see the same old woman standing close by and she also asked this brother as to what was in his basket. The youth looked at her with a smile. Mother, I have three oranges which I gathered many miles away and these oranges will cure the illness of our fair princess. That is wonderful, said the old woman, and now you will wed the princess. The youth shook his head. I don't think the king will be very happy to see his daughter marry a poor fellow such as myself. I will be quite content if I am rewarded with a little money which will keep my mother in comfort. How can a king break his word? said the old woman. Maybe he will try to get out of his promise by asking you to perform some impossible task. The old woman pondered for a while. I will help you. Here is a magic whip, a gold ring and a silver whistle. Uh, but what do I do with them? queried the youth. The old woman whispered in his ear as to the uses he could make of these magical items. The youth duly went to the palace and when he told the king he had brought the three oranges, the king, remembering the past baskets, wondered whether he could see frogs, snakes or oranges. But when the lid was removed from the basket, there lay the three golden oranges. As soon as the princess ate them, a miracle seemed to happen for she was immediately transformed into radiant health. The king was overcome with happiness. Then of a sudden he remembered his promise that the princess could marry whomsoever obtained the oranges. An ordinary working youth this couldn't do and the king frowned at such a thought. All the courtiers wondered whether or not he could keep his promise. The king clasped the youth on the shoulder and said, you have done well and you shall marry the princess, providing you do three simple tasks. The youth readily agreed to undertake any task that the king desired. Well, your first task is to rid my garden of all the birds that flock there, said the king. With a smile, the youth went out into the palace garden, cracked his magic whip three times and every bird flew away. The king was astonished and quickly tried to think of a task that could be beyond the youth's ability to perform. Then it came to him, your second task is to get rid of all the hares that are doing so much damage in my garden. Off went the youth into the garden and putting the silver whistle to his lips, played a tune at which hares came loping up to him from all directions. Still playing his whistle, the youth walked back into the palace with all the hares following at his heels. The king was more than surprised. Then he had a brain wave. Here at last was a task no one could possibly do. Turning to the youth, he said, For your third task, choose the hair I like best. The youth knew that whichever hair he selected, the king could say that wasn't the right one. Certainly, your majesty, said the youth, but before I choose the hair, let me place this gold ring on the finger of the princess. The king couldn't see how this could help the youth in his task. So he agreed and the youth put the ring given to him by the old woman onto the princess finger. No sooner was the ring on her finger when it began to shrink in size, causing the princess to cry out in pain. Father, this ring is killing me. Please marry me to this youth at once. The king realized the youth was too clever for him, 
So in a begging voice, he promised that if the youth loosened the ring, he should marry the princess that very day. So the youth and the princess were married. His brothers were released from prison and his mother lived in comfort for the rest of her life. That's the end of the story. Hope you like it. For more stories, please subscribe to our channel Twiny Kids Fun. Thank you for listening.